Podcast. Cars say a lot about who we are. It represents freedom for a lot of people. This season on Drive, I'm going to talk to all sorts of different people. I looked at car names. Yes. A- and yes. I found all the car names that have science or astronomically it's inspired. Crazy. It's crazy. It's huge. It is. Okay, yes, sure. I happen to be CEO of Ford Motor Company. For me, it's all about cars, movement, and our mutual passion for things that get us around. This is Drive, and I'm Jim Farley. This episode is brought to you by Paramount Plus. Ewan McGregor stars as Count Alexander Rostov in A Gentleman in Moscow, the new limited series based on the best selling novel. Stream it on March 29th with the Paramount Plus with Showtime plan. Visit ParamountPlus.com to try it free. Hold on to your butts. We are changing the course of history as we see it. That is what Westman demands. Now, this affects Iris. Um, Iris, where are you? What you feel only matters to you. I do not entertain hypotheticals. The world as it is is vexing enough. Iris, I have a tip for you. Don't take drugs! Or whatever movies with Wesley and Iris. What up? And welcome to Or Whatever Movies. I'm your co-host, Iris, and I'm here with my older brother, Wesley. Today we're talking a film fresh off the stream, a Netflix original, The Mother. Man, didn't expect this one. You know, we've seen her in Hunger Games getting all action-y, and she was in the X-Men movies or whatever, but like this is like a weird porcelain kind of (laughs) restrained performance from her. I thought was crazy. Wait. I was very specific about this being the Jennifer Lopez, the mother, the J-Lo, the mother. J-Law. No, <laughs> not not to be confused with the J-Law mother. Wait, I watched the wrong one? <laughs> I, I get it. It's confusing. J-Law, J-Lo, mother and the mother. But this is the Jennifer. I was very specific, Wes. <laughs> did you see mother? I did. Did we talk about the Aronofsky Lawrence Scandal? Lord, uh, well, I know they dated on the set of that movie. Kind of her married, like embracing something else. Wait, he was married? He was with Rachel Weiss. Rachel Weiss, who's with James Bond? Well, now she's with James Bond. Interesting. I did not know that. If you're with Rachel Weiss, you don't mess around. I don't see what the thing is, man. She has pancake face. Pancake face. You know, I just noticed that J-Lo kind of has a nose. It's okay. kind of wide, like she's got it's kind of wide in the middle, like kind of an ideal nose for glasses. <laughs> so I used to have this army green jacket with a furry hood. Yeah. And I'd wear it. I wore it out in Hollywood one night and I had like my hair on top of the hood and it was just like a lot of hair. And the bound one of the doormen was like, he, she was like, girl, you got to control that weave. It's <laughs> like my hair. <laughs> and I was like, weave me? That's my that's real hair. And all I could think about was J-Lo's weave in this. She has a weave in this? Her hair is impossibly long and always down for some reason. Yeah, it's not functional. Any more than that yeah. that army jacket or whatever, that jacket with the hood. That's standard issue military, right? The fuzzy hood. <laughs> I guess it's camouflage in a way. Yeah, you sure. It's very wolf-like. It's calling to the wolf. Talk about stages of a video game extraction level style. She just went from like sub bosses to like the main boss. And in the main boss, it's always like a knife fight in the snow. Yeah. You have to go close combat for the main boss because he wants to get because it's like weirdly sexual and intimate for him for some reason. Look, so Joe Fines and Gael Garcia Bernal, they look nothing alike. But I kind of (laughs) confused all the baddies in this movie. Joe Fines, he was the guy that didn't die in the fire that she triggered. And he was the official worst baby assassin ever, right? Right, because you don't you don't go straight for the navel. You go for the underbelly. I just don't know how he had a big old knife and stabbed her in the gut and missed the baby entirely. Did it glance off of the fake silicone belly or something? For some reason, he went for like an uppercut type stab. He like upper stabbed her. The reveal was so weird of the belly that I thought in the middle of the fight, she like slipped a thing under her belly and was like, no, you can't. Don't hurt my baby or whatever. And then she was going to punch him in the face. I was like, how do you like she hit it? And then she was like nine and a half months pregnant. And I was like, what? No, I thought it was pretty realistic because they had the the Audi, like the Audi was showing (laughs) through her little spandex, you know. And I was like, oh, that's legit. 
But if you're gonna if you're gonna murder a baby, if you're gonna commit infanticide, you gotta red wedding it. You gotta like do multiple spoiler. Oh man, sorry. I mean, I know what it is. I just I haven't watched a show past season one, but I know what the red wedding is because everybody talks about everything, whatever that you know that show is. I'll try not to spoil it further, but the news hits the the internet the next day. Full spoilers. <sighs> you know what didn't hit the internet that wasn't spoiled for me? The mother. I did not even know this was in in production until it was like the number one movie on Netflix. Is it still the number one movie? Uh, on as Netflix? of this recording, it's it's definitely in the top ten and very strong because it's free on Netflix and it stars J Lo. She really is a superstar. And again, like uh, like movies of this type, Extraction and stuff may be kind of the only ones that people have seen because this had lots of vibes of the female vigilante kind of ex-military type thing. And the the, yeah. the vengeful mother is not a, a new concept. Where else has the vengeful mother concept been explored? Uh, Well, let's see. Mother! <laughs> yeah, I can't think. Why you got to put me on the spot all Tarantino-like? <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, okay, vengeful mother is one thing, but the parent. Ooh, 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 vengeful bride in Kill Bill. Yeah, there were, and you know, and there's the the parent going after the child, taken style, and protecting mm, the kid. Vengeful parent. Yeah. What about the annoying child trope? Oh, for sure, the precocious child who thinks that they know everything. <laughs> Lucy Paye is an interesting choice for J Lo's illegitimate child. Uh, I don't know. Those terms don't apply in the modern era. So, okay, maybe not as many women, but definitely parents looking for their child. This is the gray woman with the precocious pain in the ass child who somehow is not Julia Butters. Um, are you talking about The Gray by Liam Neeson? Wasn't no, that all snowy? that's the wolf movie. <laughs> that's a snowy movie, yes. The Gray Man, did that just completely vanish from your radar? Oh, well... But I can see how you can confuse it with the grave because there are lots of wolves in this movie. And I was like, oh, no, she like saved the wolf cubs. Now the, I bet you the wolf is going to rescue them. Right. It's going to be all natty gay. I'd be like, what? Like jump from a thing and tackle Joe Fines and they're going to get away. And then the wolf is going to get hurt. He's going to go to kill the wolf and she's going to take him out. Wasn't didn't wolves also play a prominent role in All Quiet on the Western Front? Um, I guess sort of. Not, not a prominent role necessarily. But this is the, you know, feral parent protecting its child. Uh, have you been to Mother Wolf in WeHo? Is that is, is that the art installation? No. Oh, that's Meow Wolf. <laughs> meow. Mother Wolf, Meow, meow. Wolf, J-Lo, j -Lo, Mother the Mother. Uh, no, Mother Wolf is a restaurant and it's the bomb. Take you there for your birthday. Does it match the pasta bar? It's pasta bar level food but it's not pasta bar level pretense it sounded like you said pasta baller which is actually kind of appropriate <laughs> and it also had and maybe it was because of the snow or whatever and her mercenary kind of uh, army green jacket type vibe it felt kind of rambo-ish to me like the first the first blood but i came up with ramblo no ram see because j-lo ramblo ramblo hello no i thought maybe because of cocaine but no <laughs> There's no cocaine. These are they're drug lord. Oh no, you're right. They're arms dealers. <laughs> no, this is uh, this is the Last of Us, but with gun runners instead of zombies. He is kind of zombie like though at the end. Yeah. So I've said a lot of great things about Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. I got nothing but respect. Uh oh. You know, and she carries the movie. Uh huh. All I'm trying to say is a lot of setup for me saying that it was just a little humorless for me. It, it is. It's true. She's very dour and bitter in a way that the Liam Neesons of the world can be. But JLo is kind of colorful and vivacious. And part of her charm is like the smile and the infectious laugh. She can be all serious. But I think the only she like allows like a motherly tear and maybe like a small smile knowing that her child will be safe or whatever. But oh, spoiler. But yeah, kind of nothing kind of too serious it seems almost as this as though this no it can't be that this role would have been written for a dude it's too maternal yeah for like a lot of great set pieces it wasn't a ton of fun for some reason and though it wasn't just j-lo it was definitely top down from j-lo and lucy Piaz was like so humorless and i hate you <laughs> and i hate this and i hate being here and maybe it just by osmosis was like affecting how i felt about the ride you did not like that the child was disrespectful and, and contemptuous of the mother? 
Yeah, I got enough of that. Also, did was there a romantic connection between Cruz and the mother? Between who? The FBI agent who sends oh, her pictures every year. It was meant to, to, we were meant to think or to get that vibe because she, that was the father figure for the kid. But I don't think so. She said, she, then it was basically, I never thought about it. But she's like, eh, eh kind of. And she's like, yeah, maybe because it doesn't matter because he's dead. I can say whatever I want, right? It's not like, ooh, she likes you. <laughs> Well, I just, I thought maybe there was a missing scene or something. No, man, this is hyper-focused on the safety and well-being of the child. No time for love, Dr. Jones. Was she involved for either Adrian or Hector for love? Or was it all just part of the ruse? Yeah, that's what she seemed to suggest, that she was the femme fatale and, and boning dudes for information was kind of the part of the job. So she's cold and, and Sarah Connor-like. And thus not, no one invites, wants to invite Sarah Connor to the party. So she does what oh, she has man. to do. And she shacks up with the people who can teach young John to be military experts. And indeed, like Sarah Connor, she goes back to the dude, like Enrique, with all the weapons on the ranch. She like goes back to her former abode and like takes a truck. <laughs> she really does. I mean, she even dons the wife beater. Oh, you can't say that anymore, can you? I don't know. Man, she even dons the, the tank top and the aviators with the hair and the ponytail. So you have to understand, though, it's a condition of our age. Like, wife beaters just was was like douchebag. I'm sure douchebag is horrific for, like, boomers or whatever. But not for, but what about for, like, millennials and Z? I don't know. We, we, it basically comes down to feral instinct in this movie. And even though her kid is not present, her kid needs to be safe. Right. And she anticipated that. She said, let you let me know if there's any trouble when she did the unthinkable, the unrealistic signing the termination of child rights. Does that form agree? And is it standard like red, s sitting at the ready in hospitals on a clipboard? Like it's unrealistic that she would have signed that? Yeah, that it exists in the first place here. Oh, hey, okay, grab uh, that one of those. I need that stack of termination of child rights forms. <laughs> It was like all ready to go and she signs it and it's a done deal. You can walk out of the hospital. Let me know if there's any trouble. And Kelly Ray's like, I guess there's going to be trouble. <laughs> yeah, trouble with this movie's premise. Did she enjoy this? Kelly Ray? Yeah. Yeah, she said, and I quote, well, it wasn't the worst movie I've ever seen. Oh my God, she sounds like you. She said that it was it was okay. She It was kind of forgettable because it's kind of a forgettable premise. You know what my trouble with this movie was? What? How old do you figure J-Lo is? 52? She's now 53, but when she was filming this movie, she was 52. So she all Sarah Connors it and she pieces out. And what does the card say? 12 years later. And oh, if she's right, 53 right. now, that means she's 65. Hmm. No, she was like she was like thirty five. <laughs> Man, scene. only could only be pulled off by J Lo. But if she's twenty five, right? thir if she's thirty five, does that mean she's now forty seven? Mm, yeah. <sighs> All I'm saying is that was maybe the worst kidnapping ever. When when she punched her way through the rusted floor of the car to steal that truck. Oh yeah, I was like, can I? <laughs> when Brian and I were watching that, I was like, can she really do that? That's how you get tedness. <laughs> I don't think that that's really possible. Well, she knows that she could smell the rust or whatever, and she knew that vehicle was vulnerable and there would be keys to it. Yeah. So here's the problem. Not her age, because as you said, J-Lo looks great, and she held her own admirably in this action-oriented movie, which she really hasn't done. Uh, she did a couple of movies that required some action earlier on, but it's not really her forte. It's not what she's known for. Watching her run around and do parkour after that one dude is like watching Bryce Dallas Howard outrun raptors and jump across rooftops. <laughs> like it's, a, it's a little unrealistic. The One of two exotic locales. We've got Alaska, Cuba, and then inexplicably Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> Everything is, is, see, we talked about how many people from Ohio go to Hollywood. So if they're, need, they're like, we need a city in, in America. They're like, ooh, 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 Cincinnati. Because they all know it? Yeah. And I'm sure that very conveniently there's incentives. Oh, yeah. And you remember when she's trying to find the kid and she's interrogating that one dude, but she can't get the information she needs out of him because he's the bottleneck in the operation? Wow. Yeah. Wow. There's no yeah, other use good, for that actually. joke. There's no, there's no, it's the only time that that joke is ever going to land. <laughs> 
because she murders him with a broken bottleneck. Well, I think he fell and the bottle went through his neck. Well, oh, so she's absolved of that murder? You're right. She just is guilty of the torture? If she kills, it's strictly through necessity. She was of one mind. It was save the kid. Everyone else is expendable. Even her Alaskan shop friend. Even Enrique. He's, he aged and she didn't. He aged considerably in 12 years. Because she's J-Lo. And then she kind of kind of got roughed up by Joe Fine. She had a severely split lip and a big gash on her cheek that would have required stitches. But at the end, nope, all healed. Oh, yeah, good point. Maybe she's got a good plastic surgeon. Yeah. How, I, I mean, that didn't seem like that much later. Like there wasn't a card to suggest that another 12 years had passed. Right? It seemed like maybe a couple months. <laughs> Kelly Ray was like, wait, did she wait months to come back? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price. Priceline. Life is hard, but finding a really great podcast makes the days go by so much easier. Hi, my name is Blue Tulusma. I'm a writer, an emotional intelligence coach, and the host of Humanize with Blue Tulusma, a podcast where we believe that when you humanize everyone in the room, a great conversation is almost guaranteed. Join us every week here on Electricast as me and my guest co-hosts unpack big topics and interview even bigger personalities with a sense of humor and a dash of mischief. If you're looking for a new best friend in your head, we've got you covered. Electricast. But Zoe seems fine. She doesn't seem traumatized at all by her adventure. So the uh, father figure slash vague love interest uh, Cruz. The worst of the trauma was that he died right in front of her. Like she was yeah. in the car when he died, but he deserved to die. He was never going to live, right? Why? Because he didn't see it was an open intersection on farmland and he didn't see that ambush coming. It was like, oh, out of frame, out of out of mind. He was driving along. He would have seen that car coming that broadsided them from three miles away. But he's driving down the road and kabam. And that's just, he deserved to die. He was the worst protector figure ever. No Kyle Reese was he. So he wasn't really a good protector. And that was just one of the conveniences of this movie. And you knew that that dude was going to die. I never really expected. I don't know why they went through all the trouble. She went through the trouble of saving him, super gluing him shut, establishing this weird relationship just to kill him off again. I can't tell what this is more like. Is it more like the gray man or is it more like extraction? Hmm... Don't they both have the finale spoiler where they they go into like a, a large building, like a compound, and start killing people one at a time and no one hears anything? Hmm. It's like, blam, and then they fall down and the other people are like smoking cigarettes and like looking around. <laughs> but was that, that wasn't the showdown. That was the first showdown where she killed the baddie 50 minutes into the movie for a two hour yeah, movie. You're talking about Gael Garcia Bernal. Yeah. Which, was he in love with her? Why do you have all those candles lit? Yeah, I think he, he was in love with her, but I don't think she got with him, right? Or did she? Yeah, she did. Supposedly, she was involved with both of them, as as was mansplained by the second FBI agent who was the first to get knocked off. I don't mansplain in this, in this podcast, do I? Sometimes. Man. Exactly. Extraction 2, the mother of all extractions. Mm. That's a good that's a good title. Mother extraction has its own mother connotations like when you bring in the forceps and you have to like extract the baby from the womb. You have one job, just push it out. Right. That was mansplaining. Wow. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, I have to have bad ones, right, to offset the genius of the bottleneck joke and stuff. That was, it was like it was so borderline grown worthy. Um, but yeah, so Hector was trying to create a romantic environment in which to kill each other because somehow they were both all sadistic and loved to like hurt each other. Yeah. Like, tried to murder each other. And that's why they were kind of indistinguishable because they both basically behaved the same way. Yeah. Do you think maybe they were cast for the same role? By like two casting assistants or whatever who didn't communicate. And they're like, what are we going to do? We got two of them. And they're like, let's just split it in two. 
Yeah. Or maybe they thought that it was going to be two movies and they ended up just shooting it and like cramming it together in one, like the opposite of Kill Bill. So should Netflix like stop or slow down the Netflix mill? Well, maybe they haven't because Gray Man is Netflix original. Uh, This is a Netflix original. Extraction is a Netflix original. Maybe they're just like, hey, we have the script and we love it, so we're going to do it three times. There are lots of stories that have variations over time, told by different perspectives or remade in various countries under different names, you know, uh, more than you think. But it's a tried and true formula. And I don't know, because The Gray Man was fantastically expensive. I think it was record setting for a Netflix or for a streaming original. And The Mother was not cheap, but it felt cheap. It felt like an 80s throwback gritty action movie albeit with a motherly twist it it works and it's fine is the world a better place because the mother is in it i don't think so but people like it and people love j-lo and it's top 10 and it's fine so the mother is fine and it wasn't the best movie in the world oh really i mean j-lo goes a long way but i've always thought about she really does about really like serious fighting people especially military people, and they don't have to be J-Lo quality. They can be just, you know what I mean, not quality, but they're they're really talented stunt people like Zoe Bell and stuff who could really pull off a movie exactly like this much more convincingly. If you're going to be dour and not hugely emotive and not necessarily striving for outright likability, um, they don't have to look like J-Lo, and you don't have to have the maintenance and, frankly, the budget required for J-Lo. Have you heard about this movie Sisu that's out right now? Mm -mm. All this dude does is go on a murderous rampage and kill people. And he's ugly. He looks like um, Colonel Quaritch. He looks like um, what's his nuts from uh, from Avatar. He's got a big beard and he's all scraggly and his eyes are closed by the sun, you know. But he's that's all he does is is dirty and murders people. It's like um, all quiet on the Western Front, but there's no war. (laughs) It's just for fun? Like, what's his motivation? I don't, I don't know, because I haven't seen it, but it doesn't really matter, because it's just like, that movie's totally badass or whatever. And that's what this movie could be, even with the mother angle. She doesn't have to be polished and perfect and ready for her close-up, because she's just mean and kills people. I mean, it's great that Chris Hemsworth is a cutie and stuff, but he doesn't have to be all, like, Golden Locks Thor to kill people effectively in, in Extraction. What are you trying to say here? The Mother should have been a small budget action movie, no name talent? I'm not sure that J-Lo playing against type is a stretch for her that is worth the budget required for her, for her salary. I don't know that we needed J-Lo in this movie. It could have been anyone else because this movie could have been half a dozen other movies that spring immediately to mind. And we might have taken it seriously because you you said that J-Lo carries this movie and you have adoration for J-Lo in like some weird way, in the same way that like women love Taylor Swift, like universally. I was like, my queen or whatever. I'm saying that J-Lo was the strongest thing about this movie. I will arguably agree, but it's not a J-Lo movie. Like, I don't know what she, I don't know. Like it wasn't a romantic like wedding comedy? Is that what you're saying? Because I agree that J-Lo carries the movie, but is this movie better because of her? Yeah. Well, this movie exists because of her. Yeah, this is basically and... J-Lo's turn. This is J-Lo's opportunity to do this type of movie, to play against type, and to bring a motherly vibe to what is otherwise a very masculine-dominated genre. I mean, it's is it unrealistic that she single-armedly pulls, um, what's-her-face, Zoe onto the motorcycle back while it's <sighs> moving? Probably. Is Josephine's, like just caricature-ish bad dude with the scars and the meanness and sadism yes is there nothing more to the wolf metaphor other than moms vibing with other moms the the wolf metaphor extends i'll tell you exactly how much farther that extends it extends to kids or idiots and that extent that's evident in the julia butters style kid and also in the wolf cubs and the mothers are the ones that are like, because the wolf cubs are like, let's play. And the mom's like, Arr, or whatever. And, <laughs> and and Julia Butters, Zoe, or whatever this kid's name was, was like, let's play. And J-Lo was like, Arr. and then they have this special accord and they see eye to eye and she's the wolf. And she was, she was a shit kid. I'll say that, that she was worse than John Connor. She was worse than Ellie. She was just not a smart child. And she was a child, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like it's instinct to not, to. do you not know that you're about to be torn apart by the mother for messing with the kids? 
Yeah, especially after being out in the woods, like, especially after her couple months survivalist training. Like, at that point, you'd probably understand. And that's kind of what made it feel weird and out of time. There wasn't a linear logical progression of her training or just general awareness. She had been under all the scrutiny from her mom and, and conditioned for months, right? And then she's like, hee hee hee, like at the brookside with the dangerous wolf cubs. <laughs> Only dangerous because she was about to get torn apart by the mom. Well, yeah, you don't separate a mom from any of her babies ever. And if I've learned anything, it's that you can't fault a kid for being a stupid kid. Like movie kids or like real life kids? All the kids. And it's it's convenient because like, I'm sorry, it's not your fault. It's not your fault or whatever when they do something and you have to shoot a dude in the head from 500 yards or whatever to get them out of a kidnapping situation. But I mean... Jayla was not without her faults, too. She totally Llewellyn mossed that wolf when it was hurt. The wolf was all in the den, and she approached the wolf and, like, took it food or whatever out of pity. Like like Llewellyn brought the ombre awa? Yeah, she could have died. Going back there? Yeah. The wolf was all injured and convalescing. That was the last we saw of the wolf, too. No, because she said the wolf was hurt, and then she took it food, and then later on they had that wolfly accord or whatever. But the wolf never came, came flying in from off screen to, like, attack... Joseph no, it, it did the thing where it like like uh, Natty Gan, where it, it walks away after they have their cord or whatever, and then it looks back over, and then it woo, and she looks up, and the music is swelling, and she and Zoe are like hugging, and they look up, and the wolf is silhouetted against the moon. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> That would it have been it felt weird. It was disconnected. She was, you know, they had the, the time was all wonky. They made weird decisions. Her answer to everything. You know, my answer to everything that's wrong with you is I'm here. I'm here. I promise I'll all be here. And then she almost immediately bails and like leaves her. <laughs> try to explain it to her or whatever. Because the target was on her back or whatever. It was like Leon the professional in the snow. You know, it was fine. And it was good. The mother was good. But it would have been nice if Zoe had a better turn. In the scene before the finale, the final battle with the big baddie, she's like, I hate you in the Alaskan sundry shop or whatever. Yeah. She's like, I hate you. And she's like pouting on the bridge and, and throwing stuff. And then the next scene, they're in the car and she's like, I love you. And I'm like, wait, what happened? Yeah, a little bit disjointed. Maybe this was the J-Lo mother miniseries that they just crammed together. Maybe. It was very convenient. That every time she got onto a moving vehicle that was not in a car, she had on a, a face obscuring helmet. Yeah, I was like, when she put on the helmet, I was like, why did she put on? Oh, stunt rider. Right? Yeah, there, there were, I think, who I forget who she spoke to. It was like Good Morning America or something or or whatever a Hota Koteb is or whatever. And uh, they were like, you rode a motorcycle in this movie. And she's like, well, I was on a motorcycle. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's also some green screen behind the scenes stuff online where you see her leaning determinedly and squintingly into the wind, but she's like on a green screen, technically aboard a motorbike when she hauls uh, Julia Butters onto the bike. Ugh. You can't call her Julia Butters. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, she um, she's J Lo, dude. That's it would be it would cost way more in insurance to put J Lo on an actual motorcycle than it would to put her in a you know a volume to record yeah. that motorcycle stunt scene so you so i i suggested the mother because we need fresh new movies and this one is a massive hit and i watched it and then you didn't watch it right away and i was annoyed because i'm afraid that movies like this flit from my brain and i was very concerned that i was gonna have to brush up and watch the mother again so are you gonna are you gonna meconium on the mother what <laughs> jeez <laughs> I'm not even a mother or a parent, and I know exactly what that is. And that was the biggest stretch you've ever made on or whatever movies. <clears throat> that was a crappy joke. Oh, don't poo-poo my joke. No, stop it. <laughs> so the mother... I poop. <laughs> the mother, I struggled with this one like Megan and other movies of that type. This is another, like you said, this is JLo's chance at this kind of movie. And then she can look back when she is 65 for real and be like, yeah, I made an action movie. Didn't you see The Mother? And we're like, no. And she's like, well, it's still on Netflix. Check it out. There were blah, blah, blah. And it was blah, blah, blah. And, and blah. So the writing is blah. It's not, it's what's, what's my blah, blah, the, ra the line rating. It's whatever. It's whatever. It's fine. It's whatever. I'll give JLo an all right for at her age and props for, for throwing down or whatever. It was every other 
It was salt. It was every other movie that is like this movie. You give this the bala the line? <laughs> bala saying? the line for a, an official whatever rating. Uh, well, us mothers got to stick together, Wes. Man. And that's why I give the mother a good. And that's our discussion on The Mother, a Netflix original film available on Netflix at the time that's recording, number one in the U.S., and that's why you're listening to this discussion. Why don't you check out a number of other discussions that we referenced in this review, including The Gray Man, Extraction, Na- and The Adventures of Nat Again, all at <laughs> or whatever movies.com or wherever you get podcasts. We love to hear from you, 818-835-0473 or whatever movies at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Welcome to Sarah Talk Solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, you've tuned into a bit of a different type of show. I'm Sarah B and I'm your host. You can find me on my IG which is Aussie underscore Sarah underscore LA. I talk about amazing relevant conversations and topics and what functions that goes on in this magical, wonderful, wonderful city of the City of Angels. My IG which is Aussie underscore Sarah underscore LA. Electric acid. Hey, it's Tim from 50 Years of Music with 50-Year-Old White Guys, the comedy podcast you had no idea you needed. Join Ben, Jeff, and me as we continue our musical road trip back through the years and around the globe. See, just when you thought all white guys were like Joe Rogan, you come across three educators trying to remember when we were cool. 50 Years of Music with 50-Year-Old White Guys. Electric acid. Electric acid.